Hello Uni Game fans, we are in for a treat this week with interesting games and a trio of 1.0 releases, one of which is 13 years in the making. But first, let's begin with Gods, a co-op fantasy first-person title in which you play as members of the underfunded City Watch and have to restore law and order. Yes, it's a medieval popo simulator as you work together with your teammates to raid criminal hideouts using medieval weapons in order to take out your enemies. There are three main rival gangs in the orcs, rogue merchants, and even a necromancer cult, so you need to be careful having some early Assassin's Creed-like elements of having to stick out and study the hideouts before charging head in, as well as a Shadow of Mordor style hierarchy system with the kingpin at the top of the organization. It seems to be satirical in tone since the developer does talk about you committing city sanction murder and wanton property destruction, so we'll have to see how it delivers. Baron, those blue pilots are back. They're moving in. They just don't let up. We better hurry. Here's a game which I covered a little while back and has finally made it to release, in which the Brew Barons is one part flight sim and one part management merchant simulator, in which you have started your own brewery and are attempting to sell in the region, but pirates are attempting to shoot you out of the skies in order to enforce their own monopoly. There is some Studio Ghibli influence on this game, drawing upon Porco Rosso from 1992 and thus look promising. Don't go expecting ace combat however, since the aerial combat does seem to be a little bit slower since you are using propeller planes after all, but it does have a good look, so let's hope the gameplay systems are compelling enough. Lucky for us, I know a quality brew, an old family recipe of mine. There's plenty of ingredients around here, should we grab a few? Love indie games? Sign up to my newsletter to get a weekly dose of what's hot, along with some news and of course, weekly game giveaways, so if interested, link is in the description below. This next title is on the list not necessarily because it's great, but more because I'm just curious about the game, which does look very strange indeed. Since Pooh's Day is from a Japanese developer who self-identifies as a Hikikomori or a Shutin and has made a game about such a character. You can watch several documentaries on YouTube that interview and talk to these people who have usually become disenfranchised with the pace of modern life, instead opting to stay shut in their room to read manga, watch anime or just to play video games, and it's an increasing population in Asian countries like in Japan, South Korea and even in Singapore to some extent. This game is a beat-em-up brawler with tower defense elements since you play as a guardian robot who has to protect the Hikikomori character from enemies rushing into the house. It's very Japanese weird if you know what I mean, with all sorts of absurd situations and ideas, so it's definitely a curiosity, although I'm not guaranteeing the quality of the game. This next title exploded in popularity during the most recent Steam Nix festival since Minami Lane is a cozy management sim with a wonderful art style. You are building out said lane and gradually constructing and adding more shops to it over time with the goal of maximizing the happiness of the villagers by providing them what they want. It comes to us from the developer of the minimalist roguelite Froggy Battle, with this entry being quite the interesting departure. I just mentioned the spooky pixel art adventure platformer Avoid Hope in my video last week on adventure games, in which this is a survival horror adjacent game but is more of a side-scrolling platformer. The city has collapsed due to something turning people and creatures into monsters, in which our protagonists are a couple who are trying to find a cure. 
there are puzzles to solve and a whole city to explore, and while there are monsters and you have some ways of dealing with them, the best course of action in most cases is to run away, being a different kind of adventure platformer worth a look. Smaller releases begins with Boon and Burdens. Yes, another roguelite title that seems to have Vampire Survivor's inspiration, but the developer has shown some restraint by not spamming you with enemies, so it's a slightly different take on the genre, and is the same developer that made Gunlocked, so twisting the concept is their speciality. Once upon a time in 2013, the original Brothers A Tale of Two Sons captivated many, with the remake looking to bring that same emotional tale to a whole new audience. Although it should be noted that it's not the original developers doing this and they have outsourced it to another studio. Just a quick one here with the Switch port of Cavern of Dreams, a throwback 3D platformer that is pretty good and is the perfect fit for the console. An interesting strategy roguelike title is Gods Against Machines, one in which you play as an almighty deity and have to fend off an invading race of alien robots who have landed on your planet and are beginning to conquer it piece by piece. It's an RTS adjacent title in which you are summoning units or powerful attacks like meteors to destroy the enemy base but not necessarily having your own base churning out units but certain gods and spells will allow you to do that. It has a roguelike structure with an interesting risk-reward system. Depending on how aggressive you play in choosing which territory to go after next, so if you want a strategy game, this is a pretty good bet for the week. yourself with 350 classic Nono Ground puzzles from the world of Story of Seasons. This next title is not so indie since Pixel Cross Story of Seasons uses the Story of Seasons or Harvest Moon IP, but it's a Picross puzzle game which is my favourite type of logic puzzle, plus I love the IP so I want to give it a mention. As you complete puzzles, the day's progress, seasons change, your farm expands and crops grow. Over 350 puzzles in all will occupy you for hours. Unlock entries in the 100 plus page almanac that celebrates all your favorite characters and critters from the Story of Seasons games.
This next title will be for Colony Sim slash City Builder fans since Primitive Society Simulator has you playing as the leader of an ancient tribe guiding your people, looking to have plenty of systems to wrap your head around. This next title is a curiosity since Robin Hood Sherwood Builders follows in the footsteps of many games based on Robin Hood, and in addition to the third person action adventure combat, there are base building elements as well and looks neat. It might be somewhat of a miracle that Tamarack Trail made it to release since their primary publisher, Versus Evil, was effectively shut down while this was in development, so kudos to the team for pushing through. In which this is a roguelite dice builder where you are customizing the different faces of the dice and looks intriguing and is the hidden gem of the week. A roguelite shoot em up title of interest is Technocide, in which you're defending your mothership from oncoming threats, having weapon variety and roguelite style upgrades, in which the overkill system in this results in enemies exploding into shrapnel to cause even more damage and looks like it causes satisfying chain reactions. Here's an interesting RPG title named Thyria, one that mixes both real-time action-adventure style action on the overworld map with turn-based combat and has potential, more on this later in the week.
latest not so indie title in Welcome to Paradise, a zombie crafting action adventure game in which you have some zombies on your side and can get them to do stuff for you, coming to us from the developer of How to Survive, which is a very classic zombie game from 2014. We also have a 3D platformer of interest in William and Sly, which is a reimagining of the William and Sly Flash games and is from the original developer and is something like 8 years in the making but does follow a trend of open world exploration games starring foxes slash wolves, so we'll see how this is received. If you're planning a trip to Japan, perhaps Shashingo Learn Japanese with Photography will be one of interest, an edutainment game that follows a long lineage of such games going back to Math Blaster and Zumbinis, but of course with modern sheen and polish. You're exploring Japanese streets with a camera in which taking photos of stuff creates flashcards complete with pronunciation and even the Japanese characters and looks like a clever way of learning the language. Take that, Duolingo! This week also sees the 1.0 release of Wrath Aeon of Ruin, a boomer shooter that apparently is based on Quick 1 technology and is a throwback in more ways than one. You're hunting down guardians of the old world in a realm left rot, having a variety of powerful weapons including a gigantic arm blade and simply looks like boomer shooter excellence. This spent over 4 years in early access and has been well received so far, so let's hope they will manage to stick the landing. If you're an indie developer and have no idea how to start with marketing your game, get on my mailing list via the link in the description below, where I'll send you some free templates and guides soon. Here's a roguelite RPG of interest in Dice Folk, in which, as the name proposes, has dice as a central mechanic, but not like in Tamarack Trail mentioned earlier. You have a party of three creatures, which are able to rotate in battle, but you can also control the rotation of the enemy, which definitely has interesting strategic implications. I do love my monster taming games, so of course this is off note, with the dice rather than card focus being a different twist. 
I'm also excited to share the 1.0 release of this game since Spirit Fall is an awesome roguelike platformer that I have covered many times last year in which this takes a lot of inspiration from Hades so of course I was in. You're able to call upon various elemental animal spirits to augment your abilities but instead of a top-down action title, this is a side-scroller and more interestingly has combat inspired by platform fighters like Smash Brothers even having a Final Smash equivalent type attack so if you love roguelite, trust me on this one. Imagine my surprise when a tweet from this developer showed up on my timeline since this has been 13 years of work, 10 of which were in early access and we finally have the 1.0 release of Secrets of Grandia. Now for those of you who are new to indie games, you might not have heard of this game before and I don't fault you for that since it has been quietly chugging away in early access, with periods of radio silence if I'm not remembering wrong, with the one big question being why is it taking so long? This is an action-adventure RPG with co-op support, set in a classic high fantasy world, taking inspiration from classic SNES games but also parodying them in some ways. The closest comparison that I have to this would be Cross Code which is excellent and to be fair, there isn't really any Cross Code likes in the world so this game will scratch that itch, having a full campaign with over 300 unique characters as well as 30 plus boss fights and plenty of side content like fishing, mini games, pet taming, gardening and more. Oh, and that is in addition to the arcadey roguelite mode for replayability but the highlight should be the main story campaign as well as the action and I'm just so curious about this game. There should be a launch discount when this switches to 1.0 on February 29th so if you don't own it, pick it up then to save a couple of dollars. A special mention goes to Patreon member and indie game ultra fan Sean H with a look at more upcoming action adventure games in this video.